Hello, welcome to Art Cause Special this Monday on International Women's Day. I'm Pam Sidhu. I'm back here for another, another episode of Mindful Mondays with a little bit of a difference because, of course, it's a momentous day today. It is International Women's Day. So what could be a better time than now to meet the women at Art Corps? So hi, everybody. Hi. 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 So we've got um, the, well, I'm, I'm going to reveal basically the women behind the scenes here at Art Corps. So we have Alice. Hi, Alice. Hi. <laughs> Alice, you, do you want to just tell tell a little bit about your, your job role and what it is that you do at Art Corps? Of course. Yeah, thanks, Pam. Um, so I'm Alice. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm the assistant curator at Art Corps, um, working on specifically the Art Corps Gallery programme. Um, which hopefully we'll be able to share with you very soon at Albert Street. And yeah, I've been working with Art Course since January, so still quite new, still navigating the role, but it's all very exciting. And yeah, I'm really excited for the year ahead. We're excited too, so watch this space. <laughs> Ruchitha, um, very warm welcome to you. Um, Ruchitha is one of one of the founders of Art Corps. Um, do you want to just uh, give us a little... A little bit about you and Art Corps. Yeah, sure. Hi, hi, I'm Luchita. I'm one of the founder of Art Corps in Derby, as well as um, in my current role as uh, the executive director here. Um, and it's been, what, 21 years that I've been connected with Art Corps. Um, Art Corps has been running for 20, more than 25 years now. And um, I'm quite excited about this session today here, Pam. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And I'm also, um, well, I'm going to enjoy it. So that's me. You'll hear more about me and my journey in, in, in the next few minutes. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you, Rutita. And over to Katrina. Hi, Katrina. Hi, um, I'm Katrina. Um, I'm the project coordinator at Art Corps. Um, so I joined in December um, and I do work with the participatory kind of programs and events. So all the kind of children's sessions, community sessions, um, I'm kind of behind the scenes organising those. And I've probably seen loads of people <laughs> briefly on Zoom before. So that's me. <laughs> Fantastic. Thanks, Katrina. And last but not least, we have the lovely Paulina. Hi, Paulina. Hello. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Paulina and I'm basically a newbie here. I just joined <laughs> recently and I'm just like an office assistant and I'm excited to work with everything and all the projects. Hopefully in the, when the gallery opens, uh, it will be fun over there, there as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, do you know, um, Art Corps is a fast growing organisation. So it's so great um, to have, um, you know, so many incredible women um, to be part of this organization to take it um, you know to that next level as it's growing so fast so um, thank you know Paulina you said you're a newbie uh, Katrina Alice great to have you here um, Ruchita of course you know what um, you're the roots you're the founder of this organization so it was Ruchita it was you yourself that actually suggested uh, that we get together as women and have a little bit of a chit chat um, today, you know, people have seen me doing the videos, people have seen um, lots of art classes, lots of stuff happening here um, online because Art Corps were one of the very few organizations that right from the word go, you know, when lockdown happened a year ago, um, you know, went uh, you know, running straight away with an online program and um, providing art classes, art materials, even devices, you know, what can I say? Everything's been there, mental health support, you name it, it's been happening here. But I wanted to just take a step back from the organization and talk about us as women today. And, you know, it is International Women's Day and the main theme of International Women's Day today is choose to challenge, choose to challenge those inequalities. And we've all had a journey to get where we are today. Um, you know, what inequalities would you say that you that that needs to be challenged? What have you faced on your journey? And I'm going to start with the lovely Paulina. Um, so Paulina, you know, I know that you mentioned that you're originally um, from Poland. You've yeah. Been 12 years. 
Now that's incredible. And I'm sure a lot of people watching this right now are going to be able to relate to moving country. You know, we can, I can think to myself, you know what, moving house is hard work. You've moved yeah. country, you know, um, you know, you've, you've come to a, a new country with a new language, a new system. And, you know, you're, you're breaking those boundaries, these inequalities. But how's it been for you? Would you say that um, as a woman, um, you've faced a lot of inequalities? How has it been? What comes um, to mind right now? So the first thing that comes to mind is when I moved here, I was, uh, I was 10 years old. And obviously, I didn't speak English at all. I just came here like fresh, just packed my bags, me and my whole family. So my father, my dad, my uh, dad, and mom, and two sisters. We all moved here like fresh, brand new. And when I was going to school, obviously, I didn't speak any English. Yeah. And yeah, it was just hard learning uh, the language. And I faced a lot of bullying. And like as a little girl, you know, everyone's just like, oh, so tiny little, can't do anything. But yeah, that was really challenging, just like learning the language and then like overcoming, uh, like, you know, the bullying. And, like, overcoming the prejudices that you yeah. face. Yeah. Yeah. And look at you now, you're speaking fluent English. Yeah. So that's a massive yeah. um, barrier that you overcame. Yeah. Um, just like... Just uh, having my own voice as well just like you know connecting with my voice and like also like the two languages that I now speak yes yes I know being bilingual myself it's great to speak more than one language in terms yeah. of expressing yourself um sometimes it's easy to express yourself in one language sometimes in another um, yeah. and as a woman I mean, did you say that you, you had a, a brother as well in your family? Or was it you thought, did you say it was two sisters? Yes, yeah, two sisters. So two sisters, three of us. right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, did you, do you think it would have been different for you if you'd have been a boy moving here? Or do you think it would have been the same? Do you, did you face inequalities along the way based on being a woman? I think, I think it would have been different if I was a, a boy, <laughs> actually, yeah everyone's always um, view me as like a small shy really cute you know sort of little girl but like with boys it would have been different I think maybe I wouldn't get bullied as much I'm not sure. yeah 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 um I can completely relate to you Paulina because growing yeah. up I mean I was born in this country but I was bullied a lot growing up um you know, I uh, faced a lot of inequalities um, down to the colour of my skin, unfortunately, the area that mm -hmm. I lived in. Um, and, you know, we were different. So I can completely relate um, to what you're saying. And yeah, so you felt that if you if you were, you know, maybe uh, not little and you, you wouldn't have been bullied as much if you'd have been a bloke, yeah. if you'd have been a man, you know, so that was an inequality that you faced. And how do you yeah, find, how, yeah, sorry, go yeah, on. Go on. <laughs> no, no. I was just going to say, like, because um, everyone always view me as, like, a shy and, like, quiet. And, like, you know, with boys, they see um, something different. Like, they, the boys are, like, loud and, you know, energetic. So I was, uh, I felt like I was uh, shut down sometimes. Yeah. 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 And how did you? How did you come out of that? How did you come through that? How did you? A, yeah, it took me a while to like find my voice and sort of like get comfortable with English language. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just going throughout the school years, sort of uh, having new friends, making friendships, and like connection and trusting people. Yeah. Great, that's great. And you you have come out of that now, you know. Uh, Ruchita, you just... Uh... Yeah, I just wanted to say it's so important now in today's times than ever before, I would say, to have that voice, to be, to be felt, being heard, 
to yeah. to um, like I, I can completely relate with what Paulina is saying. Um, as a child, I grew up in India, and um, you know, it's it's a normal thing that if you have boys in the family, they would sit on the dining table, and if they're girls, they would sit on the floor to have dinner. And I would always question that as a child, and um, you know, that wouldn't be noticed or heard. But I think the more we all kind of stand up and put put our voices together collectively to the smallest thing, it might not mean a lot at that point of time, but as you grow that mentality, that mindset sits in people's mind to then it grows more and more, isn't it? To how, how do we kind of bring that equality is between female and male and, you know, it is still on in certain areas. Yes, it is. And how do you bring that sort of a thing um, get those voices heard? Absolutely. That's a very important point that you just raised there, Richard, because, um, you know, as you said, there can be things that we experience as kids um, that then if we don't if we don't look at that, if we don't switch the way we're thinking, it can just grow. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, you know, the analogy that you use there, the example that you use there of the boys sitting at the dining table, the girls sitting on the floor and eating their dinner, you know, um, a, a lot of people maybe not that exact example, but would be able to relate to um, inequalities between them and their brothers. I mean, I know growing up, I was always being told, you're a girl, this is why you can't do this. When I was asked, well, why is it that my brothers can do this? Because they're boys, you're a girl, you know? And we were just supposed to accept that. Um, so, um, you know, like Paulina, Richard, you yourself, you came from India, you know, you've broken a lot of barriers um and you know you've come over here to the uk with this organization art court and made it very successful um but it's not been easy along the way you know i know from conversations we've had even your educational choices were questioned right can you tell us a little bit about that yeah it's it's interesting to see um growing up in india and growing up in a family who was um uh, open to to accept certain things which are different to the norms at that time when I was growing up um, has been quite useful for me to have a family who was supportive and who was able to see what I wanted to achieve and um, let me go on that journey because um, um, yes uh, pursuing a, an education post schooling um, in in arts was not something which was forget not just for girls, but even for boys, it wasn't taken very positively. Um, and, um, it, you know, it was the faith that my parents had in me that enabled me to, to achieve what I did. Um, yes, right from, right from um, getting the right qualifications, but also um, standing up and being an artist in a community, a female artist who was working, uh, a woman artist working in the arts, um, to coming here, Paulina, experiencing some of the, the hurdles or barriers with language, not, not having English as the first language, but of course I had, the, I had the privilege to have been educated in an English medium school, which a lot of people might not have who are, who are moving and making this country their home. And this whole set of social, cultural, economic barriers that um, kind of, you know, we become or I, I had experienced, I would say, um, and then um, coming in here and establishing an organization. Um, I, I, what, what I feel quite proud about is that, you know, some of those learnings, some of those, even they've been challenging experiences, we have been able to put that into the organization to make it more positive, to make it more supportive, so that um, people we work with, people we, engage in people who experience the art and culture through art core can can probably not just see but value it and and not same similar barriers i would say or how we can help them in their journeys so far um, that's what we try and do we try and embed those values in in the organization throughout right from the staff to the people who come in um, and i think that's one of the reasons why um, 
we've been able to connect and, and it has been so successful so far uh, for our yes, call. Yes. So you've taken your, your own personal experiences and experiences of other people on the team and thought, okay, how can we now help others? How can we help others overcome this? So, you know, you've had, you've faced inequalities, you know, again, bringing it back to the theme of International Women's Day is choose to challenge, but we've faced inequalities and we've overcome them. And this is why we're here today. This is why we're here even having this conversation because we have overcome inequalities. Um, which is why we're able to even be here. I'm so grateful for this, you know, and I just want to just take a moment just to mention a couple of people that are actually watching live right now. So for anybody watching live right now, if you would like to, or even if you're watching this back a little bit later on, if you would like to pop a comment in the box about any inequalities that you have faced, that you have overcome. Um, I know I've got a lady watching right now. Um, yes, Banu uh, Jadeja Mahal, I'm talking about you. Um, so this lady is incredible. She was one of the first female um, British Asian police officers in Leicester. She broke some serious barriers um, and um, she's retired now, but she's still, you know, continuing to do a lot of great work um, through her voluntary work. So um, thank you for being part of this, uh, um, uh, you know, watching us and being part of this. Um, Abano, it's great to have you here because you're a real inspiration in terms of what you've achieved because she overcame so many barriers um, to be able to do that. Um, women, um, back in those days, there wasn't that many female police officers, let alone police officers of colour, um, and uh, she did it. So now I would like to take you to the lovely Katrina. Hi, Katrina. Hi. So what comes to your mind in terms of facing inequalities and what you've um, overcome? I think like from a women's perspective, um, it's not so much as an inequality, more of like a challenge would be um, kind of more of an imposter syndrome, um, like being a woman and um, like growing up um, when I was younger, I used to be called, um, I used to be told a lot that I had an attitude when really I was just kind of, um, I like kind of standing up for myself or if I spoke out if, I'd, if you know something wasn't done right oh my gosh I can so relate to that yeah. I was always told I had an attitude and a big mouth yeah those words they kind of cling on to you then because then you start to think oh oh maybe I should just be a little bit more quieter and you kind of um you kind of step back when you're like your voice is your power so it's not you're not having a bad attitude sometimes you are just you know speaking up um I think that's something I still have to work on that because, um, you know, it does affect you get the quiet voice, but it's something that I'm really aware of. And like being when you are being assertive, that, you know, that you're being like you're being a strong presence. And, you know, those the, the more negative term of attitude might not necessarily be used if you were um, a, a, if I was a boy or, you know, a, a young man. So that that's one yeah. of the things that comes up when I think of like in inequality kind of challenge type thing that I like personally I find quite difficult to overcome I'm sure I'm, everybody I'm, else <laughs> it's the same definitely definitely I'm nodding away and I'm sure there's many people that will watch this back and have had that experience you know I, I anytime I I questioned anything you know that's what I was told um yeah uh you know yeah you have a bad attitude like, yeah this yeah. is wrong <laughs> yeah <laughs> there's a difference I think that's a very real and this is what we're doing here today we're doing real talk you know that's a very real um everything we've talked about today has been very real and that one is as well and I really appreciate that and I'm just going to mention um somebody else who's watching right now this is the lovely uh, Moira um Moira uh, Jean she says um being strong as a woman is important but also still sneered at a bit she said, growing up in the 1940s and 1950s, when women had led, had had to be strong to do men's jobs, during and after the war, women were encouraged to return to the kitchen and be sweet little things. She said, my dad always told me to look after my mom and my sister, then I would be criticised for being strong. I could never play the little delicate woman like my mom and sister. Thank you, Moira, for that. And um, it's great that you didn't play that, that delicate woman because look at the amazing work that you've gone on to do. 
So uh, thank you for that. And for anybody else that's watching this right now, please do, you know, leave your comments, inequalities that you have faced, that you challenges that you face and overcome. We want to hear from you. And now I'm going to take you to the lovely Alice. Hi, Alice. Hello. <laughs> so Alice, you know, what inequalities would you say that you have faced yourself? Yeah, it's, you know, it's really inspiring to hear like you all talk um, and I can like totally you know, relate to some of the things that you're, you're saying, especially, Katrina, what you're saying about imposter syndrome. I think I've probably suffered with that all of my life. Um, but I'm also thinking about, you know, my privilege as like a white woman and a, a white cis woman as well. And I think that's on my mind a lot, especially in recent times and how I can kind of use my power to support, you know, my fellow like women and non-binary people, people of color, um, you know, disabled women, there's you know there's a whole spectrum of women and I think you know the feminism that I um really follow and support is like intersectional um at least I try to strive to be as intersectional as possible but just thinking yeah about like a I guess a personal experience being a woman I guess growing up in quite a working class background in Birmingham I didn't know what feminism was I didn't know I didn't you know th these things that we we talk about now it wasn't obvious to me so it was a given that you know, my dad did the manly things and my mom might have like, looked after us and did all the domestic things that you associate to being a woman. And it wasn't really until I went to university um, and studied at an art school that I started to, you know, be involved in that in that discourse around it. So all of the inequalities around gender pay and um, representation and how like men hold the power in these like large institutions. So I was very lucky, you know, to, to be able to go to university and to and to be involved in that discourse. I think as as women working in the arts, um, you know, we, we are involved in this conversation, maybe more so than some other people working in different sectors. So we're incre incredibly privileged to be in that position. And for me, it's about sharing that with everyone. So I'm frequently the one at like the dinner table in my family home to like bring up these things. And, you know, it might be that, um, members of my family aren't aware of things so, you know in the same way that I wasn't when I was perhaps younger yeah. um, but I think yeah th there is there is this conversation around um, access to to discourse and and you know where does that start is it that we should be talking about this at school so that we're all aware of this and that it's yeah. you know it's installed at a young age that inequality um, is still prevalent it's still happening um, is, yeah. you know, just, I'm thinking about did somebody mention like phrases you know saying things like oh you're a girl or you do that like a girl or yeah there, there's been a lot of discourse around that recently as well hasn't there so I think um, installing that at a young age uh, you know trying to be as inclusive and as intersectional as possible from a from you know childhood is is super super important and it's something that I'm like really passionate about installing <laughs> Yeah, no, they're really good points that you've raised there. Katrina, just bring you in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, um, Alice just um, reminded me because I had quite similar, um, quite similarly kind of background wise. Um, I'm like in my late twenties now, but I didn't really start to understand or pro probably like experience kind of feminism and um, these types of things until I was probably like my early mid twenties. Mm -hmm. But um, recently I've come across um it's there there it's like an organization you can find them on like Instagram and stuff called the female lead and they have like educational resources and things for young women so um it's always like a good place to start if you know if someone's watching this and they don't know and, and they're not sure where to start and um, there's really nice and you get like they have like lots of different examples from you know, uh, regular people to celebrities, activists and things. So I just thought I would <laughs> plug them really quickly. When no, that's great, <laughs> Trina, because there is so many inspirational women. There is just so many women that we can look to, um, to inspire us, um, you know, and I think everybody here has raised really important points. And Alice, I know from when we were talking earlier as well, you were talking as well about... Um, um, you know, the heads of organizations for art organizations, even though, I mean, you know, just to, just to kind of reiterate what you said to me before is, even though there's lots of women in art school, 
how come they're not making it all the way to, you know, be in the heads of arts organizations? It's still predominantly male dominated. Um, and, you know, that's a really important point. Um, you know, it, and, and why, why do you think that is? Who knows? Who knows? I mean, if you think about like art schools in like, let's say the 70s, for example, like they would, you know, it would be predominantly men attending these schools. And so, yeah, from my experience attending an art school, you know, in the second city in the UK, you know, it's a, it's, it's a reputable art school. It was predominantly women. Um, and then it wasn't until I graduated and I realised, you know, looking at these institutions and organisations, you know, looking at the directors, yeah. the positions are held by men. And I think it's getting better. I don't want to be like totally negative. Like look at Rashida, for example, you know, that's a, a, an absolute inspirational like example. And, you know, another organisation that I've just worked at in Birmingham as well was entirely female led. So it is happening. And I think, you know, the more we speak about it, the more we, um, you know, protest against it, hopefully we'll see some change. I don't, I don't know what it is. I don't know why, why they're yeah. all. Women. <laughs> Richard, can I bring you in? Yeah. Yeah, let's bring that women power in. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say uh, I agree with you, Alice. What you, completely what you're saying, and I think um, one thing what what we all have to do is first of all pat ourselves on the back for what we have been able to achieve, and two, whenever we get a chance grab that opportunity and make way for others to join in. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I, I just felt, I just always feel that um, if we are able to achieve or, or, you know, have those voices heard, you know, and if we are in a, in a, in a position where we are able to get those voices to be conveyed in a different, you know, to wherever it needs to be conveyed, I think it's, it's very important that, we take that stand and we support other women. Absolutely. I think that's, a, that is very vital. Absolutely. There's a very popular quote going around social media. You've probably all seen it. Um, you know, when women support other women, incredible things happen and they do. And, and, and right now that's exactly what we're doing. And, you know, I, I just want to give another mention to people like Moira, people like Banu, who have paved the way for us. Mm -hmm. And we're going to pave the way for the next generation. And, you know, and step by step, we will get there because Alice, it's like, you know, what you, the, the point you raised there, um, you know, people are questioning that. I mean, I know I have worked with certain organizations and they are questioning how come women aren't either coming forward for these jobs or are they not getting them? Is it because somewhere along the line, they are still hitting a glass ceiling and not being able to go through that glass ceiling? Mm -hmm. You know, um, it was obvious, um, you know, when I was growing up, what that glass ceiling was. I don't think it's that obvious anymore. It's a little bit more hidden, but there is a gender pay gap, you know, um, not just in the arts, but in, in lots of, well, you know, lots of, a lot of yeah. things. Yeah. I mean, I'm from a media background. There's a huge gender, gender pay gap, you know. If we look at um, some of the celebs, the top celebs, there's massive, there's, you know, the men are predominantly paid a lot more than the women. Why is that? You know, um, we're in 2021. So we are choosing to challenge in this conversation and we are bringing up this stuff. And um, uh, Katrina as well, what you mentioned, um, that's such an important point because a lot of us have had this subconscious um uh, you know, you might choose to call it programming, you might call it conditioning, whatever you choose to call it, put into us from a very young age. Paulina, you know, you mentioned there the inequalities that you faced when you moved here from school, whether it was in the home being told, oh, you know what, can you just be quiet, you know, or yeah, you know, exactly, spoke, yeah. yeah. Or, or whether it was at school and, you know, as you said, you found your voice. Um, and all of us here, regardless of our age or background, we're at the point where we found our voice, which is why we're privileged enough to be able to have this conversation right now. Um, and, you know, uh, there's, I know that there's people watching that are gonna be able to relate to this. I'd love to speak to you all. Um, you know, time flies when you're having fun. So <laughs> we're almost out of time, um, sadly, um, because we could really, you know, talk about this in great detail. There's just so much to cover, but, um who inspires you and you know i'm gonna 
while you while you think about who inspires you, I'm just going to mention a really inspirational woman that was almost forgotten from history. Um, so somebody who I discovered a couple of years ago, maybe a little bit longer than that, probably about four or five years ago, I discovered her story. And I was just like, wow, I never knew about this woman. So she was a suffragette. I'm talking about Princess Sophia Dalip Singh. Now, she was one of the first women of colour here in this country. She was the granddaughter of the last emperor, the last Maharaja of Punjab. Um, so her granddad was Maharaja Ranjit Singh, and he was epic in terms of what he achieved in his kingdom. But her dad was brought to um, England by the British uh, Empire at the age of, um, I think, eight or nine. He was stripped, away, you know, his family was stripped away from him. He became the godchild of Queen Victoria. He was never allowed to go back and visit um, his country, um, go back there because they feared that there would be an uprising. And he married um, a European lady and then had children. One of those children was Princess Sophia Dalip Singh and she went back. And she went back and she connected with that spirit of, of her ancestors, the spirit of her culture at the time. And there was a lot of freedom fighters at the time because of, you know, this was the time when the British Empire was ruling there. But she brought that, that freedom fighter spirit back here and she fought for the rights of women. And she used her um, royal privileges, the fact that, um, you know, she was connected to Queen Victoria um as a way you know because they weren't throwing her in jail and she was at the front line of you know um a lot of the protests she said well hang on if women don't have the right to vote why do we have to pay tax you know there was a huge inequality happening then um so she did a lot she campaigned a lot so that's the woman that really inspires me when i look at her story and what she did and the changes she made in her lifetime for us you know um that's that's who inspires me, one of many. Um, who inspires you? Who'd like to go first? And if you're watching, please do put a comment in and let us know who inspires you. Rachita. I don't mind going. I think women of everyday life inspire me a lot. Um, people, women from all walks of life inspire me a lot. Um, right from, you know, uh, I think we mentioned in, in the discussion earlier that if you are a housewife doing the cooking and the cleaning, it's it's a very important job. You know, it's a very, very important job to make sure the kids are having the right, you know, uh, things at home, um, things are sorted at the house, uh, in the home, so that husbands or dads or fathers or, can go and do the work. But equally, when needed, these women who have been doing things at home can stand up and make their way out and earn living to support their husbands or the families or the household. So it's a very, you know, what women can do, I don't think any, the men can do, multitasking, you know, raising up children, you know, having, bearing children, having, um, you know, getting getting the household housework sorted, even going, most of the people who I know right now, who, are connect, who I'm connected with, they work, as well, they go outside and do work. So it's very important to to value that, to understand that. And I think it's 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 something that really inspires me to to be who I am today. Because for me, my work is very important. So is my house, my home, my kids, my family, and that balance, bringing that balance. It's only a woman who can do that. Um, so I think for me, that that is what it is. Yes. That's wonderful. So basically our superpower is the fact that we are women. Um, and you've raised some really important points there. And I think, you know, we, what's, what's really important is giving ourselves that right to choose. You know, we should have that right to choose. It's, you know, we have that right to choose whether we are, you know, at home, raising children, looking after the house, doing all that side of things, whether we choose to work as well whether we choose to work and not do the family thing, we have that right to choose. But you're right, you know, we are amazing multitaskers. And for those of you watching right now with children, um, I have kids and they have gone back to school today, um, you know, <laughs> after homeschooling. So, um, you know, 
but it was it was one of those times where I I exercised the right to choose and I cut back on a lot of my other work because I thought no I want to be with my children um you know they were homeschooling I want to homeschool I want to give them the attention that you know I, I want to use this valuable time so you know it's great to have that um that choice rather than have it imposed on us either way um what about yourself Paulina who inspires you yeah I really relate to what Ruchita said so like women around us and like those who raise the voices and like fight for us yeah yeah excellent excellent yeah because there's so many role models we just need to look around us you know is it our mother is it our grandmother is it people in the community is it you know is it is it the lady working in that corner shop you know that strong woman who might be doing 16 hours a day standing there working selflessly yeah. you know um but yeah it's it's incredible isn't it we just need to open our eyes and look at the roles that women are doing and instantly we're inspired look at ourselves look at our own journey and inspire ourselves even from from the good that we've achieved and we've accomplished Katrina who inspires you um well I, I totally agree with um Chisa and Pauline and kind of the everyday people um my because my background is in like history and museums I always kind of get inspired from people that I've like come across and researching um yeah. and my and one of the organizations I used to work for I did a, a tour a history tour called Bannets, Ban Bonnets Bandoliers and Ballot Papers and it was about the the move the move of women at the early 20th century from um, being at home to being uh, revolutionaries in Ireland and um, I, I always was kind of inspired by those people that we talked about in the tour um, like aside from you know what they were doing just the actual power and the you know the get up and go that they had to literally change change the course um, of what was happening for women so I always kind of I like to look back to them and I have a book and I flick through sometimes. Absolutely. Yeah, they, they changed history for us. Mm -hmm. History, history, you know, which yeah. way are we go going with this? They they did Absolutely. it, you know. Yeah. And you know what always what, what always inspires me um is is doesn't matter how far back we go in history, there's always a woman, you know, no matter how much history might have tried to change the story, there's always a woman that they can't they can't silence, you know, that has somewhere, even in male dominated times, um, you know, being this amazing figure. Um, so that's great. Thank you for sharing that, Katrina. Um, what about yourself, Alice? Who inspires you? Ah, oh, there's so many women that inspire me. <laughs> It'd be like, we, how much time do we have? Um, yeah, I mean, just to kind of um, follow on from what everyone is saying about these like everyday women, but you know, as well as that, women who are fighting for justice at the moment, women of colour, you know, trans women, um, disabled women, all these women that are like marginalising our society who are like fighting for, you know, the, the recognition and the acknowledgement. Um, I'm, reading a, I'm reading a really good book at the moment called Feminism Interrupted, uh, Disrupting Power, which is by a woman called Lola Olafemi. Um, she's a black woman. She's amazing. She writes about like reproductive justice and you know trans misogyny and gendered Islamophobia. Oh, everything. Yeah, everything that is so current and so like needed at the minute that we we need to be talking about. Um, so I'd very you know highly recommend you all read that. <laughs> um, cool. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's amazing. And um, I, you know what? We can just draw an inspiration from so many places can't we like I said the people around us people in history books you know you mentioned that then this is what I'm currently reading so this is Michelle Obama um becoming and she inspires me you know reading this a woman of color the what she faced you know her I think it was her great grandparents were slaves she became one of the most powerful women in America um, you know, through just ignoring those barriers and striving and just thinking, no, I'm going to do this. And she did it. You know, she was the first lady of America. You can't really, you know, well, other than actually becoming the president herself, you know. But um, so, yeah, very inspirational. Talking about these inspirational women. Um, we've got a few more comments here. So uh, Moira, 
uh, says, so glad the discussions among women are now so much more inclusive and kindly than sometimes in the 80s. Establishing refuges for women in the late 70s and into the 80s, there were so many unpleasant splits and divisions. We need to be strong and always kind. And, um, you know, again, Moira, thank you for the great work that you have done and your generation to establish the pathway for us to be able to walk. Barno is also saying, good morning, team. Happy International Women's Day to all. So nice to hear inspirational women, their backbones of the world. Absolutely. And you, Barno, are one of our inspirational women as well. Um, you know, a very inspirational story, the way you broke those barriers down and became one of those first female officers of colour here in, well, in Leicester. Um, absolutely amazing. So I'd like to say a big thank you to all the inspirational women out there, whether you are raising children or whether you're in high executive job roles, um, whether you are, you are just, just being, even that is amazing, you know, um, to just be. And, you know, um, women, I think, uh, as we said earlier, Rachida, our superpower is the fact that we are women. We can multitask, we do so much. And, you know, I think uh, it's good to remind ourselves of that, you know, maybe get a pen and paper and write down all the amazing things that you have achieved, the, the um, inequalities that you might have faced, that you've overcome, um, where you want to go, you know. Um, let, let's, let's, um, let's become even more inspirational to ourselves, to ourselves. I think that's the, the main thing is, do we inspire ourselves? And I'm sure all of us, you know, Paulina, you mentioned you found your voice. Um, Alice, you know, you mentioned the inequalities through art school and everything, and then you, you, you're, you're now inspiring others and inspiring yourself by saying, hey, how do I use my position to change things in the world? Um, Katrina, amazing, you too found your voice despite, and you still are finding your voice, which is great, you know. You're, 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 first of all, I think it's about becoming aware of, um, you know, certain types of conditioning like, you know, something that's very common for all of us that you mentioned happened in childhood where, you know, we might be told as girls, okay, you know what, be quiet or, you know, you stay quiet, you know, you fat, you, you, you're on that journey, you've, you've become aware of it and you're starting to switch it. It's absolutely brilliant. Ruchita, you know, um, woman power, um, you know, female led organization here with ArtCore going national. Um, you know, you've broken those barriers from India to the UK um, from being told that you're sitting and eating on the floor to where you are now. And the thing is, even as I say this, I know that um, um, some of our families would not have thought that they were doing anything wrong. There wasn't any malice there. It was just mental conditioning that was passed from generation to generation to generation. But hey, we are in a position now where we can, whatever that conditioning has been, whether it was at school, at home, um, at, in the workplace, whatever, we can look at that and think, is this me? Does this serve me? And if it doesn't, let's free ourselves because the shackles now are not physical. There was a time where as women, you know, as, as Moira mentioned and stuff, it was hard to go out there and work and it was hard to do all this stuff. The shackles now are not physical, they're mental. So can we drop? you know, whatever might be holding us back and just go for it. Yeah, I think we have the power to change things. And if we have that power, we should implement it properly. I think we can, we can make that change happen. It's very important. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, we, we here at Artful, we choose to challenge and we hope you do too. So thank you very much. And please do, if you like this um, episode, share it um, and uh, check out Artful's pages um for all the up and coming events that are going on is there anything that you'd like to mention of anything that we've got coming up that uh, people should watch out for um there is there is stuff i don't know katrina do you want to say maybe yeah you? i'll do a quick run through of the week if you <laughs> <laughs> if you want um tomorrow we're we have some stop motion animation with um another wonderful female artist so we have magdalena aaron doing that on zoom we have chair yoga again with another great female artist with Fiona Adamson on Wednesday again on Zoom. Um, so in the comments, what I'll do is I can pop down a sign up link. And if anybody wants to join us, um, they can sign up and I'll drop them an email then. 
Wonderful. Thank you very much. Thanks for tuning in. And we'll be back here next Monday for another episode of Mindful Mondays. Take care and enjoy your week. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye.